Noel, your immediate response to UEFA's decision today? I'm very pleased they've took the decision to move the Euros out a year. I think it just gives everybody breathing space at a really difficult time, an unprecedented time, and one where you know the health of our players, of our fans, and everybody in, in the footballing family of Europe I is at stake. So, yeah, I, I would uh, commend them for doing that. Uh, they have aspirations around the build-up to that and how it'll all fall into place. Uh, I, the the uh, qualifications. They also have aspirations, as you know, in completing domestic leads, leagues, etc. So. Um, it's uh, a big ask, but I think the hard work begins now and the consultation processes start. But yeah, ver very, very pleased to, to get clarity on at least an aspiration of where we need to be at this awful time. And of course, a, a, a decision from UEFA today that the playoff against Slovakia, the semi-final, will now be played between June the 1st and June the 9th. Mm -hmm. There's clarity there as well now. Yeah, I think we know that that's a, a realistic target for us to aim for. Will it happen? Will, will the medical world allow that? We don't know. Will HSE and government uh, allow fans to travel, players to travel? We don't want to put anybody in any danger. That's the first thing. But if there is a lift and if there is a possibility of those games going ahead, then I think it... Uh, it augurs well that we have a, a defined date in our times that by, you know, that by the 10th of June we'll know our fate. That, that would be something. And of course a lot of speculation about Mick McCarthy and Stephen Kenny and their respective futures. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, I don't think there's any point in, uh, in trying to do something about that now. We're still in the position where we don't know whether we're going to the Euros or not. We'll know on June the 10th. And I would have thought June the 10th would be uh, a good time to... Uh, to start worrying or overly worrying about that, that particular instance. And we'll, we'll do that at the right time and we'll speak to the stakeholders first. We won't, we won't be talking publicly about that until the right time. 2021 is the centenary of the FAI and now we have four games in Euro 2021 in Dublin. Mm. Yeah, isn't that something, you know, if it all comes to pass, it will be great. You know, our, our stakeholders have worked so hard and our partners here in Dublin, you know, for this year, and it, okay, it's been, it's been put off by year, that's a blow. Uh, it's also a blow to, to the hospitality sector, uh, it's, it's also a blow to, to the Exchequer. The Exchequer loses out and we were hoping to, to make amends for the help that we've been given. But it's just been put out for a year. Our partners have uh, indicated today that we're, we're staying strong and uh, you know, we're going to yeah. emphatically uh, roll our sleeves up and, uh, and get stuck into what will be another long process to, um, to make sure that you know, that we can turn it around in that year and that everything that, that was built up to 2020 can be switched seamlessly to 2021. But our partners have been brilliant to now. In, from that's, you know, when you look at uh, Dublin City Council, you look at the Department of Sport and Government, the Aviva Stadium themselves, and, and below that, you know, lots of very important partners on Garda Síochána, the DAA, for instance, uh, you know, the, the, the NTA. Um, it, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, people who have done a lot of good work to now, and we all want to see that carry on. It, it, it's a, it's a, a, a bump in the road, there's no doubt about that, but, um, but I think we're going to work hard together to make sure that we have a great tournament. As you say, what a time to do a 2021 centenary, start of something real new in football in, in Ireland, a look back at all the great things of the last hundred years, and to, uh, to have it all, the icing on the cake would be to have tournament games uh, in Dublin, with Ireland playing even better. Now, the League of Ireland you know, the aspiration from UEFA is to recommence club football in the middle of April. A lot of League of Ireland clubs suffering hardship at the moment. What's your message to them on the back of today's decisions? Well, well we're in uh, direct consultation with the clubs, have been for, for the last week or so. Uh, we started a steering group, as you know, and we're, we're assessing the impact daily of um, what this is doing to the clubs and, and how hard it is for them. As you know, some of them have already gone and announced that they uh, won't be able to pay players. That's falling in line with, uh, I suppose, the, the national uh, emergency that's occurred with, with uh, thousands and thousands of people being laid off. In my own village tonight, the hotel closed and uh, 200 people were laid off. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's a really, really tough time and we all get that and we're trying very hard to, uh, to come up with um, some solutions with the clubs uh, and indeed the PFAI and the players themselves that will give us some sense of satisfaction in this extraordinary time uh, that 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 you know that players can be helped in some in some shape or form uh, but they, there's a big meeting on Thursday again with the League of Ireland clubs and uh, our, our, our steering group will continue to, to work and assess and 
and look at how we can uh, do this. If there is something in Europe, you know, that we can go to, we will go. Uh, if there is something in government, you know, we, we would look at that too for the players. But every industry is in the same boat. It's really, really tough to imagine that there would be something extra for us there. We have to, uh, we have to really, you know, dig deep now and see how, how can we uh, best shelter, you know, our, our, our players essentially and, and, and our clubs who will lose huge revenues. So um, it, it's a real worry, Carl. but uh, I think all we can do is get the stakeholders around the table, make it the priority that it is and, uh, and try and deliver something that, that brings about some form of comfort in, 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 a, in a terrible time. And look, the aspirations to get going again in April, that would be great. It would, we know there'd be a limit then to the damage that would be done. That would be something. But uh, it's aspirational, and let's hope that um, everything that goes on with COVID-19 means that at that point we can play football again. It's, um, it's a tough sort of position, very tough position to be in. Football isn't alone, but uh, we'll work through it as really as best we can. But um, it's important now that everybody, clubs, players, the association, has an open mind on what's next. I think so, yes. I think it's extraordinary times and, and will life ever be the same again? Who knows? You know, and I think in this period, as I say, the clubs have some real deep thinking to do themselves about how the future looks for them when, when, if and when we ever do get back to what we call normality. And uh, do they use this time to, to create uh, something new or different in, in time? Uh, you know, as you know, um, in, in normal times there for the last while. The uh, All-Ireland League has been suggested. There's been suggestions about re re reverting to a, a winter league, etc. You know, um, I think there's a lot to ponder for the clubs. We're here to help. They'll make the decisions. And uh, we, we, we just hope that uh, together we can find a way through this, this awful period. Um, but it, it, it won't be for effort and hard work. It's a big priority in the association. A big step that may help the league clubs and it's definitely going to help Irish football was taken on Monday night when the Senior Council voted in the new banking procedures for the FEI. Mm -hmm. That's a major result. It's a major result for the whole game and that goes from grassroots right the way through the, uh, the amateur game the, and, and when you fi find the, the issues that we're just talking about are so prevalent in the League of Ireland in our professional game, um, right there is, is a place that will benefit straight away. So all of them will uh, in time and really grateful and, and welcome the, uh, the vote that was uh, decided by, by the council members which actually makes the association feel as if it can work again and function properly as the business that it was always set out to be. That was the, the, the difference I think, you know, once that vote went through, you, you know, as, as an association you can start to plan properly knowing that you have the resources to, uh, to, to, to get the, the show back on the road again and, and League of Ireland is, is one of the first places, you know, we, we would owe money to the League of Ireland clubs and uh, that, that sign off straight away has given us an ability to, uh, to, to give the club some comfort and you know obviously we would hope that, that in summer in that that the players would be comforted too uh, but again we'll, we'll, we'll take it um, you know won't be issuing orders and telling people what to do here we'll be just trying to assist and hope that, uh, that the game comes to some, some really good joined up uh, consequences together and that's the um, that's, that's the big thing here, the football needs to stay strong and stay together. We, we, we have this uh, money now to, uh, to make the game work a little bit better. It's not the whole lot, we didn't get everything. Uh, there's still, as you know, uh, government uh, assistance to come and there's um, you know, potentially UEFA money to come too. So, so it will get better again, but right at this time I think that vote going through was, was, was great. I finally feels like the association can do what the association is meant to do. And talk of affiliation fees perhaps for league clubs. Well, I think uh, the, the clubs will, um, will, will discuss measures, you know, with the steering group. And again, they have their own meeting on Thursday. They have a very big meeting on Thursday uh, to, to try and, and, and work out the future. But if we were to do something like that, it would be us talking to the clubs about it first. I don't think now is the, is the portal to do it. Our, um, our joy at getting the money in means that we have lots of, uh, lots of constituents and lots of areas need to be, uh, to be plugged, gaps and funding gaps, etc. Uh, but but that said, um, you know, I think we've, we've said it in the past, we'll say it now in this tough time, you know, the, the League of Ireland and the players are a priority right now. In terms of football, we, we all watched the boys in green on Monday night and we went back to 94, etc. You feel like a new start is, is around the corner now? I f it feels that way. I, I believe the association has done unbelievably good things in the last 20, 30 years that, that have been out of the news because of other reasons. And 
it's time now to get you know the power of football back into the I suppose into the mindset and and you know as you say watching the program and seeing what what football can do for Ireland and uh, you know they're talking about it being involved in the peace process winning the tricolour back because the fans took it back from paramilitary activity um, that that alone is, is something huge that football does but when, when I see the stuff that I see you know from our RDOs and our ETBs here, our regional development officers and our enterprise training board officers who go around the country and bring in to schools and to, uh, and to other areas, you know, the brilliant educative and, uh, and fun things that football can, can deliver for young people. Uh, I was out in Darndale last week as one of the best things I've gone to in a long, long time where the local guards and the, uh, and the young people are playing in night leagues together. It's, it's, it's unheard of. And, and to hear uh, Christine, the girl who, um, who runs the show out there to hear her say uh, we tried everything in here football is the only thing that works that tells you how important football is it didn't need to flash back to 1990 and watch the whole country go mad football is very important and I believe that the future uh, and what our association should be about is is from grassroots level you know to the schools right up through all the all the different chambers right the way up to uh, the professional game and indeed the international game that we recognise football for what it is from now on, and never go back to the to the dark days where, where you know football is, is, is um, you know uh, being dragged through the gutter. I think uh, the, the the great thing, the great opportunity that 2021 gives us, the great opportunity that bringing the, the newfound income and, and revenues that are given to us by the uh, stakeholders who've supported us, that um, we c we can actually deliver on on what an association is truly meant to deliver on in all those areas, and. Uh, Regardless of, of who the CEO is or who the president is, you know, th th there should be a fundamental uh, framework of what the association does and how it is appreciated by its people. And I think uh, we're, we're getting to a point where, where that can start to happen. And there's a, an opportunity now for football in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic to show people leadership, to show community support, to be there for each other. Uh, it's really important that football sticks together at this time, you know, that uh, we all understand the, the, the pain that's in the air right now. There's some, some very serious things happening, uh, elderly people particularly very vulnerable. But uh, I suppose the hope is, is that football sticks together, that we, uh, that we unite in some way. I think Monday night in the council voting in, I think that's a real stepping stone to, uh, to, a, to a better future. Um, it's only, a, 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 I suppose, a point in time, but it's significant. It's big in that we can now start to, to act again like a proper association. And, and what that can do then is hopefully give confidence and help to, uh, to all of the, the football people in the country, you know, young and old, that, um, that, they're, uh, that they're part of a, of, of a great thing, that the association football in this country is, is about to, uh, to come back and be stronger than it ever was before. And that, you know, in, in this particular time, of need and uh, a time of worry that we look out for each other, that the community stays strong and that football sticks its chest out. Uh, I, I just get the feeling that um, we'll, be, we'll, we'll, we'll come back stronger than ever when this COVID-19 disappears. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy that the council voted for the, the first part of that to happen, the, the, the Bank of Ireland part. Uh, but when government's part comes in in, in late April, as, as it's suggested, and uh, UEFA get their shoulder behind the wheel after that, um, I can see a better day for all of us. I just hope people can hang in and, and be tough in the meantime.